Alarcon really made a name for himself in 2019, winning the Combat Jiu-Jitsu Fight Night Tournament and then punching his ticket to the Bantamweight Tournament where he won the title and did so, Brandon, based on you know a, a very dominant top game where he utilized something that you don't see a lot in submission grappling only tournaments, and, and that's his strikes. Good ground and pound. Fantastic ground and pound player, excellent strikes, and uh, excellent wrestling as well. He won almost every scramble that he got into. Hard left hands there by Alarcon. My name is Richard Alarcon Jr. I'm 30 years old, and I'm the CJJ Bantamweight World Champion. As far as our style of jiu-jitsu, you know, the main thing for us is self-defense. That's first. Without the strikes, we'd still be implementing the same style. You know, I mean, getting to a safe, you know, position and you know, restraining your opponent, or you know, just getting somewhere where you can take very minimal damage. That's always been our biggest thing uh, in one jiu-jitsu. You know what I mean? It's not just, you know, sport or points or nothing like that. We get to a very dominant position or a comfortable position to where we can defend ourselves. And I felt like I've displayed that, you know, in pretty much all the best CJJ competitions. I've never really, like, been in too much danger in the first 10 minutes. You know, I mean, I've always, you know, showed great self-defense and even offense and countering. So I felt like our style of jiu-jitsu is it's well up there with the self-defense, you know, realm. Patient there. Look for transition. Look for transition. If there's not there, keep them down. So this year's been, you know, pretty much just all about time management. Obviously, there's been a lot of different priorities in my life, more so work, uh, family. You just kind of get <clears throat> more in tune with, you know, what's important, what's not. You start throwing away, you know, the stuff that you don't need in your life. Get your circle a little bit tighter and you keep the close ones close, you know what I mean? I've uh, just been working a lot, super busy. Uh, we work construction, we're a family business, so uh, a lot involved in that. So we've been, just been, you know, I barely even have enough time to pull over and take a piss sometimes, you know, that's how busy we are. But, uh, you know, just been trying to get training in as, as much as possible. You know, it's been a little hit or miss. Got a couple people, you know, with health issues, so I'm definitely trying to keep a little safe. Uh, just barely even, like, really started training this week to be honest. I never really stopped lifting or fitness, that's just my lifestyle, so I just love doing that, but everything's coming back quick, it's all muscle memory. You don't really lose it once you stay, you know, in touch with your body, you stay physically fit, active, you know, you eat more good than bad, you know. It's just all about lifestyle, you know what I mean? If you're really a practitioner, it's not too hard to bounce back. You know, as far as like positionings and everything, we already know what we're good at. We're gonna try to emphasize that a little more and be a little um, more offensive rather than just hanging out for a little bit. Maybe even go for more so submissions than just the, the palm strikes themselves. Don't get me wrong, the palm strikes are great, but I think there comes a time where you're doing like so much damage that you get caught up in the strikes. And I felt like I got caught up in the strikes, especially in that the, the featherweight one, I was trying to land some strikes and that was all I was focused on rather than trying to get to a good position and work my game, you know, my, my chokes, uh, my kimuras, my top, my north-south and all that that I'm really good at. Instead, I was trying to get to a dominant position and land the strikes, more so for the excitement and the crowd. So I think uh, staying on the task at hand, getting that W, trying to go for a submission, dominant control is, you know, key to taking home that belt again. Yeah, I'm always going to find a way to defend myself properly, whether it be against an MMA guy who's known for their strikes and, you know, more so their grittiness. Their jiu-jitsu style is definitely a lot different than your your normal practitioner because they're a little more rugged, they're used to getting hit, you know, just just brutes, you could say, but they're, they're very skilled as well. They always have one or two really good moves. And then you got, you know, the practitioners that aren't really used to getting hit. Some of them know how to properly defend themselves, some of them don't. So it just all depends on, you know, your mental state, what you're able to take and, you know, what you were made to do. You know, I mean, for me, I've always been a fighter, so, you know, I've always been able to defend myself and, you know, any style, I'm, I'm going to put up, put up a, a pretty good showing. When we talk about Alarcon's ground and pound, I mean, he normally shuts down a lot of people's bottom games as well, and, you know, he's, he's maintaining this top pressure and top position uh, on Anderson. So as far as, uh, you know, going up featherweights, you know, I, you know, I just kind of, like, packed on as much weight as I could in that short amount of time. 
Uh, still felt pretty solid, you know what I mean? I went in there. I felt like, to be honest, I won the whole first 10 minutes. To be honest, I was on top, hitting uh, dominant control, being on top, getting takedowns. Over time, I was, you know, the first two exchanges, I was ahead in time. But, you know, it is what it is. Took a lot out of there as far as positioning and, and knowing weight distribution at another weight class. But honestly, like, to be honest, I felt like I could have hung in that with the best of them. I felt like I displayed a pretty solid game up until that arm bar. Trying to get it. Alarcon. Oh, he tapped. He it. tapped. Oh, my. For me, I always pull something, you know, out of any position, you know, good, bad, you know, no, no matter what, I'm always going to take something from it. Um, definitely took a lot from this last one, you know, I, I was on a low um, downward spiral as far as competitions, you know, I was suffering a loss and another loss and another loss. It was just like I got caught up in that little rhythm and I felt like this, this break definitely gave me like a reset button, but definitely pulling a lot from everything I've experienced and learned. And I think that this time that I took off definitely gives me uh, some brand new eyes, you could say. So definitely seeing a lot of new openings, different positions, things I've never seen before. Figuring a lot out with my team and just, just within myself, you know what I mean? Obviously we're not all perfect, but I feel like each day I'm perfecting myself more and more in all aspects of my life, not just my kids. The lower weights never really get too much action anyways, whether it be MMA, Jiu Jitsu, what have you, it's always been the upper weight, so I feel like this is our time to shine and show them, you know, that we bring the action too. Uh, females, you know, w w with girls, you always know it's gonna be a cat fight. You know I mean? Obviously, a lot of them implement the Jiu Jitsu because that's what they're comfortable at, but you find some girls that are, you know, from the streets, and you can, you can kind of tell some of them, and you just bring it, you know what I mean? It's just like, man, these girls are hitting way better than the guys. Definitely gonna see a, a brand new red. You know what I mean? I've definitely re rebuilt myself physically, just jumping right back into where I was, you know, in my jujitsu. So you might even see some, some different things from me as well. I'm definitely getting more comfortable with like the leg locks and everything like that. That's something I've been really working like, as far as defending, I've always known how to defend it, but now I'm starting to learn how to use them for my game and even go from a, you know, a heel hook or that transition to a dominant position for, to side control where I can definitely land some big bombs and even finish with a choke, so. Now that we have something like this, CJJ, uh, that's right up my alley. I love doing it, you know what I mean? I, you know, anything that someone throws at me, I'm always game for. Uh, but this is definitely a great opportunity for me. Uh, see what I can work, you know, re you know, retaining my belt and going from there. Feeling good, feeling ready, prepared. Uh, I'm looking forward to once again being in Cancun, this time for the Bantamweight title. I think that I've got everything it takes to be the Bantamweight champion and more, and I'm coming in completely confident. I was, I was born into martial arts. I was born into jiu-jitsu. It's something that's been in my heart and in my blood ever since I can remember. I've got a very strong group of people that I train with here, um, a very personal group to me. Um, people that I trust, uh, my brother being one of them. I always have him. Uh, we're, we're about the same size, great training partners for each other. We're always trying to push each other uh, and level one another up. And so fortunately, I always have him by my side, um, you know, assuming neither of us are injured, but I, I feel very confident uh, with my preparation and there's been uh, no complaints. Well, this will be, you know, a, a big accomplishment for me. I, I believe this will be my fifth um, event uh, with Eddie Bravo. Uh, I've competed in, you know, EBI, um, CJJ. I was in the inaugural CJJ. I definitely feel like I'm a veteran in the, you know, submission only jujitsu scene. Very proud and honored to be competing at this historic event. Full Nelson. Full Nelson lock here. 
That's a real thing. Oh, Listen, 100%. That's it's a just... real thing. I'm tapping right there. Yeah, it's painful. This is very painful. I think I'm, I already have a very aggressive style. I come to um, pressure my opponents and I don't, I don't like to take a back step. I like to, to move forward. I, I like to hunt for the submission, but also uh, maintain strong position. Uh, I don't want to be caught out of balance. Uh, I think that some people, people, some people rely on you know, heavy striking and now that they have this opportunity to hit with their hands, um, I, I will be coming to lock people down and submit them. I feel good. I feel confident. I feel like I understand the rule set at this point. I understand the format. I understand the training that needs to go into it. It's a little more, you know, intense when you can throw strikes as well. You have to focus on, you know, not only your ability to go full pace jujitsu match, but now you've got someone trying to slap you in the face or press their palm right into your ribs. So I think I feel very prepared going into uh, this Bantamweight tournament. I think people will see that. I've been training like a madman. You know, I think at the end of the day, uh, all of these guys are high level jiu-jitsu competitors and they're gonna do what they can um, in order to get to you know, proper position in jiu-jitsu. Um, I think that's the, the, I think that the strikes are um, used mostly to open up, you know, positions of control. And that's what I'll be looking to do. Uh, if I can TKO someone, great, but I'm looking to submit every single opponent. I think uh, one of my greatest skills on the mat um, is my wizardry. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, I think one of my greatest skills um, that maybe some people know about is just my ability to uh, push past my own breaking point. I, I think that I, you know, strive for strong competition and, and people that are gonna, you know, push me and and I really enjoy a dog fight if, if it happens. And I'm always prepared. I train, you know, I train for those rounds. I, I push myself in every training session. Uh, obviously, I, I want the match to go smoothly and I want to secure a finish as quick as possible, but I do enjoy a good dog fight. I'm looking forward to displaying my hard work. I've put a lot of time and effort into constantly improving and constantly thinking about progressing in this game. And it's something that's always on my mind. Uh, I never want to plateau. So, very prepared. Representing Planet Breach. Eddie started talking about uh, combat jiu-jitsu. You know, at first I didn't really, none of us really knew, knew what to think about it. Um, uh, adding like slaps to jiu-jitsu did to me and to a lot of us kind of sound like uh, an odd concept. Don't worry about the strike, let him slap you, but it'll wake you up. At first, it wasn't something that I was interested in. I'm, I like training without strikes. I'm not looking to uh, finish someone off of damage. I'm not in here to like try and hurt somebody. I, I like the concept of trying to get somebody to submit willfully. Uh, and the art that's in that, and the work, and the, the technique that's in that. When you switch to finish with damage, it's there's a little switch in your brain that's... And there's a switch in your technique and the way you, you operate that it's... Um, not really what I'm going for, you know. Loving Ben Eddie's work here. Going to town with the pity patty slaps on the top of the head. Right. You know, I had him in a bunch of different like rubber guard holds, but I couldn't finish anything. And you know, he he kept on putting a ton of pressure. He was picking me up out of guard. He got he got some decent slaps in. Like it was it was a really good back and forth like regulation like like match. Steen looks to survive, and he does. Overtime for the Combat Jiu-Jitsu Bantamweight title here at EVI 15. And uh, going into overtime, um, I just kind of told myself, I was just like, you know, you gotta, like, 
you know, you gotta win this one. Like, like pull this one out. You know, it's gonna be a big deal if you can like win this one. Though. Uh, it was just a really cool, really cool moment to be able to share on stage with everyone. Um, uh, getting my black belt and having like kind of all my instructors there. Hi, Pike, you both look like you. After about setting the eyes, I went back to the commission. I go, can I do combat jiu-jitsu now on the open mats? And then they said, hell yeah, because they saw what I did with EBI. I go, I want to do exactly what EBI is doing, but I want to add palm strike. And they said, yeah, right. They agreed to it, boom, green lit it. We're just trying to focus on just the jiu-jitsu. Eddie was really asking me specifically a lot. He was like telling me he wanted me to compete for him in combat jiu-jitsu because of my rubber guard game. He was like, this, you know, this, it's gonna really work really well for you. You have a perfect game for combat jiu-jitsu because when these guys come in for their, their strikes, uh, you're gonna be able to wrap them up, play your rubber guard and, and you know, your 10th line of jiu-jitsu. And, um, and, you know, it's just it's gonna work well for you. You're gonna be able to find the sub. Uh, when these guys look to slap. Uh, so, and it just kind of turned out that uh, uh, Wilson Hayes, pretty much the main, you know, number one guy showing up for the 16 man yeah. event, um, showed up overweight. So then I ended up getting that match as a super fight. And that was my first combat jiu-jitsu match. I remember being pretty hype about it. You know, I was like, I was like, wow, okay, this is gonna be my, my first combat jiu-jitsu match. This guy just, literally just, he just that year fought for the, UFC title against Mighty Mouse, and um, and that was gonna be my first combat jiu-jitsu match. I remember just how hyped the crowd was, just like how hyped everybody was. You know, it felt so new. Like people didn't really know what was going to happen, so there was a real like. Well, now armbar oh, coming. Oh, oh, it is. Wow. Ben Eddie by he stops Wilson Hayes. What a win for Ben Eddie. Once I started training for combat jiu-jitsu uh, and started adding like slaps into my rounds and stuff, um, I really liked how it felt. I really liked, um, like right away it started showing me like parts of my game, parts of jiu-jitsu where, um, where I would get struck, where, um, you know, where it wouldn't work if, if, if people were able to, to strike. Um, it really started giving me a, a, an appreciation for range and closing the distance and constantly needing to have a clinch or, or control people's hands. Um, and I really liked that. I really liked, uh, it, it felt like it was really not only improving my jujitsu for if somebody's going to be striking me, but it, it felt like it was improving my jujitsu for even just normal jujitsu because uh, I couldn't just kind of hang out and have like kind of a more lazy uh, recovery guard. I had to prioritize position a lot more. I had to prioritize the clinch. I had to make sure that I was always in and tight or far enough away. You have plenty of time to submit it. You have the jiu-jitsu to do it, gun show. And it made me like uh, work a lot quicker. Yeah, I showed up and just kind of with the mindset of like, okay, let's just let, you know, you're not going to have, you're not going to be in your best like shape. Just let these guys kind of bring the, the action to you and and just kind of try and roll with it, flow with it and and, and, and find the answer. You know? I just barely started to get, get the hold back in. I knew there was like maybe 15 seconds left. Hold this till the buzzer, you know? And so I just started squeezing and squeezing and squeezing and holding. And I, I started to feel like within the last like three, four seconds that, you know, that it was in and that he was like starting to go to sleep. And I'm like, okay, if I just hold this until the buzzer and I make sure he's asleep. Like all I need to do is just make sure he's asleep and then, you know, just, release my arms and show him that he's asleep and like you know, I should win like all, all I want. You know, so 
I just held it, held it, held it, and then the buzzer hits, and I'm like, he's asleep. Like, literally, I literally felt him, like, one second before just, like, fall limp on me, and I'm, I'm just, like, hitting my head, like, wow. Like, he's asleep. Just open your arms and just show him, like, that he's asleep. However it goes, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to being able to show up healthy and uh, with good energy and and just be able to display my jiu-jitsu and, and, and bring my game. I hope I can show up um, at 100% and, and do what I do, you know? Man, I wanted to give up. Fuck. Yeah, the karate, you could, the, the, the choker wasn't... It's two fingers, it's nothing. So I knew it's I just the karate. Yes. Good it's job. Fuck it. Good job nice on looking. fighting my rubber guard. Like, yeah. I couldn't finish that. Did How are your legs feel? <laughs> They're tired. <laughs>
I believe I have what it takes to become champion because I've done it before. Um, had plenty of opportunities to get my title back. And it's always a game. It's always a challenge. These, all these guys are tough, but I definitely have the mustard. I definitely have the grit. I just got to figure out a way to beat all four of these guys in a row. I'd just like to thank Eddie and the whole crew at EBI for inviting me out once again. Um, this promotion is really cool. They're really helping the sport of jiu-jitsu in general evolve and guys like me, giving us, giving us a chance to get out of our house and do something, compete again at this level. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to meeting all the guys there again and uh, smashing some dudes up. And yeah, we'll, we'll see you guys on March 21st. So my previous experience competing on Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds, I'm gonna say it right now, I'm not one to make excuses. And this is where I make my excuse. I think I lost my matches because of a very bad haircut. It was, it was a tragedy. I came out there with like a practically a shaved head and it was just like the worst match of my life. So my hair is grown back. I feel grounded. I'm in Zen mode. I'm ready to go. The hair is ready to go. We have a workshop. It is Gabriel Daffron. But I'm gonna be stunned. Ooh, he get in he gets in deep. That is not great for Ben Eddie. That is a deep, deep entry. Oh, oh there it is, it is done! Gabriel Daffron! Uh, how has the lockdown affected my training? Uh, to start off with, uh, I was practically training with like four to five people. Um, just over and over and over again, especially for like uh, the jujitsu overtime event. I was literally training with just a super small group and I did that for, for a while actually. Um, so all my setups and everything was just so predictable because I was training with the same people, just doing the same setups over and over and over again. So I kind of lost the timing aspect. Um, however, now I'm still working in a smaller group, but I've definitely added a couple people to my group. Shout out to Josh Bacalau, Philippe, some black belts coming in here, coming in my group. I'm getting in good work. We're kind of getting to the tail end of this pandemic. Uh, some of my loved ones have gotten vaccinated. So I like to think I'm not killing any grandmas out here. So, you know, doing my best to, you know, do my best. But we are getting to the point where I'm starting to get into a little bit bigger groups for training. And I'm able to, uh, I won't say train normally, where normally I'd be training with like 50 people, but you know, I'm getting to the point where my group is expanding more than four or five people. So I'm happy with that. And, you know, I have really quality guys I'm training with. I'm training with, uh, you know, world-class black belts out there and they're smacking me up. And yeah, I'm ready to, to take a smack, give a smack, you know, whatever it takes to be a combat jiu-jitsu world champion, uh, I'm ready for it. How I got started in martial arts is pretty much like the Karate Kid. I was on the playground and kids were going no mercy on me. I had to learn a martial art, had to learn how to defend myself because, you know, I'm a pretty guy, guys like to pick on me. I have to be able to defend myself, use the art of verbal judo to misdirect their mean comments and being able to, being able to defend myself is something that, uh, you know, really interests me. So. Yeah, got into wrestling, then got into jiu-jitsu, and now I'm here. Uh, training twice a day, um, pretty much 10 to 12 sessions in a week. I get strength and conditioning in twice a week, and a lot of double sessions in jiu-jitsu. I cross train uh, boxing once a week as well. So I get a good variety of training. I have a lot of autonomy when it comes to my training schedule. So listening to your body is a key when it comes to, uh, you know, not getting injured and being consistent with, you know, training every day. I am like a two stripe 
purple belt in jujitsu at bird watching. I know what you're thinking. That might be where the duck jitsu came from, kind of like a Batman origin story. So now you guys know. Expert bird watcher. I get my binoculars, I sit there all day, and there's a lot of things you can learn from bird watching to using your jujitsu, like patience. I'm a very patient guy when it comes to bird watching and on the mats. So watch out, duck jitsu coming at you. What is my style of jujitsu? I like to compare it to a cheetah combined with a duck, a duck cheetah. I, that's how I think of myself out there. I'm a cheating duck. So watch out guys, I'm a, you don't wanna mess with me. I'm quick, I can fly, I can swim. I can really just do it all out there. With the addition of palm strikes, just changes the way you have to play your guards, your guard passing a little bit. The distance management comes into play. Uh, other than that, it's a great way to prevent stalling. Just slap the man, slap him, slap him. The guy has to move and you know, you're gonna get more exciting grappling matches. I'm a finisher, I go for the kill. Uh, regardless of the rule set, I'm gonna be looking for the submission. I'm gonna be going for the 10 minutes. I'm gonna try to finish in regulation. We could be playing um, IBJJF out there, points. We could be playing ADCC rule set. We could be playing you know, submission only, EBI style, whatever it is. I'm going to go for the kill and I'm gonna try to finish the match. My name is Marcelo Cohen. I'm a black belt to represent the Army in Jupiter, Florida. When Eddie came up with this new idea, people were a little skeptical, but combat jiu-jitsu is not jiu-jitsu, it's not MMA, it's a mix, it's a, it's a middle term. You meet it halfway. So for me, this is my uh, fourth fight at combat jiu-jitsu, so it's pretty natural. I feel great and ready to go. Competing with ABI is always a great experience. You know any round that you're gonna have there is gonna be a hard round. It's not everybody there that gets invited to things like this. You gotta be a high-level athlete, so you know there's no easy rounds API. You're gonna go against somebody high level, world class right away. So I'm excited about that to test my Jiu Jitsu skills against the best people in the world. Very close to getting the finish here. Steps over and it's gone! Marcelo Cohen with a beautiful Kimura! Wow! I have full time training in Jiu Jitsu. Uh, wake up in the morning, do my beach run or do strength and conditioning training in the morning. Then I'm going to train at 11 a.m., teaching classes afternoon. And I also do my, my third training session at night time. And on the weekends I bounce people, which is I consider part of my training too. I've been uh, training some leg locks and entanglements using these laps together. So I might surprise some of you guys with uh, some different attacks, what you guys expecting from me. It changes a lot, it makes faster, it makes more real. The palm strikes don't let you sit in positions that you normally would sit and rest in Jiu Jitsu. So you gotta all the time control distance and or you stay too far or you get too close. But what you cannot do the inversions as much because you, every time they invert too much, the palm strike get into your face. So it wakes you up. The palm strikes make the Jiu Jitsu more real. It's more applicable for MMA. It's always a great feeling when you get the invite to compete at EBI. That's my fourth time with them. So I'm super excited for this great opportunity to uh, compete in Cancun, Mexico. I've been to EBI before in Mexico City, 
but now we have a different uh, perspective and scenario, so I'm so excited to go there and do my best. My style of Jiu-Jitsu is perfect for combat Jiu-Jitsu. It's an old school close guard submission attack style. Uh, always looking for the finish, controlling distance. I feel like my Jiu-Jitsu style is perfect for combat Jiu-Jitsu. I've been tested three times already. I'm pretty confident about it. You can see going for submissions all the time, slapping everybody in the face, coming out of bad positions, attacking hard, never resting in any position or stalling. I'm looking for the finish. I want to get every single one of them. I have everything that it takes to be a champion combat jiu-jitsu. I've been training jiu-jitsu for over 20 years. I've been winning for over 10 years. This is another one. I'm gonna bring another belt to my case and I'm ready to go. I'm one of the highest levels in the bracket. I was uh, just an immigrant from Brazil and make things happen here in America with all these opportunities that jiu-jitsu bring it to me. It's a great country. The only time that you're not gonna succeed, I see a lot of people complaining, oh, there's no sponsor in jiu-jitsu. There's no sponsors for lazy people, for people that, or to get into to the things that you, get, you wanna get in jiu-jitsu, it takes a long time. Don't expect to put two years of training and think that's enough. I just got things back from jiu-jitsu after 10 years, 10 years training, then I saw something back. Put your work and you get what you want. I'm an example of that. I was illegal in this country. Look at where I am now, driving jet skis for fun, having nice cars, getting paid to do this. A lot of people talk about taking on role models in combat, sports, and Valderrama on the map with a legend, but that didn't stop them from cracking them with the right hand. Yeah, no, no respect to yeah. the person. So I appreciate it. I think for my biggest accomplishments in Jiu Jitsu, at least, is having world titles, both in Nogi and the Gi. I feel like getting a world title is not something you easily come by. There's a lot of people that have champion mentality, but do actually have the status. Those are people that you can only memorize, you know. Um, in life, I think being able to go from like, you know, the usual story of the chubby kid to the the kid to dropping weight and having a now healthy life, and being able to uh, go around the world and help other people that maybe are in the same situation, or maybe their fight's not physically but mentally, and being able to help them throughout the art, I think that's one of the biggest accomplishments I hope I can still do and continue to do. It's a little bit of a funny story how I got started into martial arts because um, initially I did Lima Lama, which was like a type of uh, karate kata and I really didn't like it because I was always more into fighting, like actually having contact. Um, and then after that, I remember, I think it was my dad's birthday. We went out to eat, and we saw a gym nearby, uh, Entram, back in, uh, back in my hometown, in Tijuana. So we saw it, and he was like, oh, he, he said like a snarky comment about like, if you weren't full or, or something about the foot, uh, I'll sign you up. And I was like, no, I'm not full. You can sign me up. But once we got there, he was like, okay, I'll sign you up for one month. If you can't make it, then you'll have to do something for me. And I was like, I'll make two months. And he said, okay, do two. And then it went from one year to two years to three years. And then eventually, uh, the MMA classes for kids were no more, and there was only Jiu-Jitsu. So that's how I started my uh, my competition scene with Jiu-Jitsu only. So that's how we are here now. Coming up from a Mexican household, like I think it's one of, a, one of the dreams to be able to fight in your own country and represent. And, um, I've previously fought in EVI and in combat format, so I think just coming back makes sense for me because I've always liked the rule set to fight. And I think this time around, I'll, I'll be able to have a few more surprises. I think essentially it's always Jiu Jitsu, right? Because, I mean, supposedly Jiu Jitsu is about defending yourself. So you just read if someone punches you and you're down, you gotta know how to tame them down come back up and then, you know, finish the fight. So I think it does change it, but in essentiality, it's still the same thing, as long as you, you know how to fight the rules properly.
So I always thought like uh, the co the combat format was very appealing for the audience, especially because you know there's a certain um, hype that they get from getting someone punched. <laughs> At least that's what most people seem to like. But especially because you you still have that that aspect of jujitsu, which is more pure in a in a certain sense. I think it also helps for especially the jujitsu community that like to see how it flourishes with you know the more um, type of physical combat uh, when it comes down to the strikes. It's a good way to to make the general audience understand more jujitsu slowly until the point where it becomes more mainstream. And I think, like, especially Kamba did a great step by by uh, by existing with with that type of format. In uh, combat the featherweights, I fought against Imanari, had a good fight, got caught like one minute left in the fight, but other than that, I gave him a good run for his money. So I don't know, that kind of made me happy because it lets me know that I can tangle with the best, which is something that I've always known. But I think that's more just in a way for me personally having more confidence in myself. I feel I'm a very tactical type of fighter, but I get very physical sometimes, especially when I get mad. So I feel, especially with the addition of palm strikes, if I do get mad, the, the tactical side will, will allow me to tame people down and then start to actually become more aggressive. So I feel that's something that helps my style the most, especially because I have a very take the back uh, type of nature fight. And essentially I, I've always like fighting anywhere, bottom, top, wrestling, you know, like uh, taking the back, going for the mountain, going for the passes. So I think the rules, it just allows me to explore those areas even more. I have to, pretty much cross the border every single day to just be able to go and train at Autos, which is in San Diego, and then come back, train here in the mornings, and then go back again every single day, uh, which can be a strain on the body and the mind especially, but build this part of the game, just proves how much you want it, you know, and I think, I think that's one of the reasons why I'll, I'll come out on top. My name is Zach Schneider, I'm a brown belt under Robert Drysdale, and I'm representing Warrior Camp. I got started in martial arts from just watching old UFC tapes. You start, you know, going onto YouTube with your friends and searching how to do a Kimura or how to escape a guillotine, uh, wrestling around. I find out that that's called Jiu Jitsu. Uh, so when I went to college, I found a club. Uh, I took over that club the next year and I've been doing jujitsu ever since. I've had a few amateur MMA fights back in the day. Uh, Warrior Camp is an MMA gym and has a lot of MMA classes and I kind of feel like if you do martial arts and you never ever strike then, you know, are you really doing martial arts, you know? So I'll, I'll go to an MMA class here and there to keep myself honest, uh, hit the pads, I have a, a heavy bag at home. Um, so I do some striking, but definitely my uh, the path that I've been going down is jujitsu. Combat jujitsu is uh, is something that rounds out what jujitsu is, uh, because there are positions in in sport jujitsu that are not realistic, um, and and whether or not those still exist in combat jujitsu, you can argue, but. The fact that someone can swing down and, you know, influence you, give you a striking influence whenever they want to, um, whenever they have a free hand to, whenever their balance is there. Um, all of a sudden now if you're in guard and you're trying to get underneath someone and, or, or you're playing a leg game and being, being lazy about your positioning, you know, not being wary of, of your space between the other person and yourself, you can get hit. Um, you know, an open palm. It, it, I, I don't think it's gonna hurt a whole lot less than a closed fist. No one's breaking hands and that's what it's really about. Uh, but, you know, you can give someone a wall up with an open hand. So I think that's a pretty good way to uh, influence the sport of jiu-jitsu toward a more realistic direction. Uh, 
I'm incredibly excited to be uh, a part of this event. I think it's it's an awesome event. It's in Cancun, which is great for me because I'm a warm weather guy and we're up here in Washington getting snowed on right now. So I'm ready to, to get down there, get on the beach, uh, go tussle with some people, uh, throw it on the line, try to do some crazy stuff, get a nice little highlight if I can. And uh, after that, hit up that buffet and enjoy my time. I'm excited about every part of this. I like getting ready for it. I like being at the gym. I like traveling for this type of stuff. I like uh, competing. I like the feeling that you, you get when you have a competition coming up and there's butterflies, you get a little nervous, you know, and you, you come to peace with that. I'm already in good shape, my, and I think this is, this is a great opportunity, a great time for me to go in and, and show people what I can do. Palm strikes change everything about the grappling game. Um, in, in grappling in general, a lot of times obviously, you're using two hands, whether you're trying to get a grip or head down, you know, you're, you're, you should always be using both hands for everything you're doing. Um, and, and so that's still gonna exist and you still have to grapple and you still have to use both hands. But there are also positions in which uh, one hand you know, can be used without throwing you off balance or without losing you major position and you can force the other guy to move. And that's really what it is, is I'm now forcing you to move because I'm in a position where I can hit you and you may or may not be, you know? Open guard or, or closed guard, there's probably spots where both people can hit each other. It, because it's a new, art, uh, we're going to see new things that people are doing all the time to change things up. My guard does not get passed very often. Um, I really try to take a, a point of pride in not letting people pass. And if you can't put me in a dominant position, then it's going to be very hard to uh, really land a strike of anything outside of that purgatory trying to reach and hit me. But uh, if you have feet on the hips, I think you can control space, and um, I feel pretty comfortable with that. It's gonna be hard to prepare for me. I'm gonna be overlooked because I'm not a premier guy in this division, but I've grappled premier guys in the gym, in many gyms, um, at my weight, above my weight. And it's always been very clear to me for the past four years that I am of that level. So I'm ready for this, I've been ready for this, and I'm excited to make my mark. Uh, I'm ready to bring it I, and trying to have some fun. My name is Taylor Yuasa. I'm a purple belt Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a second degree black belt in Judo, and I represent Ivan Salivary MMA. The reason why I got started in martial arts was from Judo. So when I was a kid, my brother came home one day from school and was like, I want to try Judo. And my dad asked me if I wanted to give it a try as well, so I did. Later on, it was pretty cool. We found out that my grandpa actually was a purple belt in Judo himself. Oh, God. Feels good, huh? It's been a minute. Began at Budokan Judo Seattle. I'm still there helping out to this day with Sensei Bert Mackey. It's probably one of my biggest passions now in coaching. Our great, great uncle did Judo. Uh, it was a family thing before we even realized it. Um, and the reason why our family kind of fell out of it was because after World War II, Japanese families wanted to become a little more Americanized, so they kind of did away with traditional Japanese sports. And uh, now in modern, the modern era, we've kind of come full circle back to our roots. In 2013, I started competing at the international level in Judo. I was a three-time national Judo champion. I competed on the US world team twice. I was really excited to be invited back. Um, I wasn't too surprised to be invited back, just because after the last CJJs in LA, 
and he came up to me and he was like, hey, you're my judo guy from now on. So I was definitely excited that, you know, he said that to me of all people. It means a lot to be able to come back and compete with the best in the world that you get to. The addition of palm strikes in combat jiu-jitsu doesn't really make a huge difference. Um, you don't see a lot of TKOs, they're kind of a rarity. That's definitely, you know, a cool thing to go for. It's cool to see TKOs in combat jiu-jitsu, but the majority of players, I think we all know, are going to use strikes to open up their submissions. They're not using strikes to knock people out, they're using it to create openings in their game and find uh, routes to other submissions that they usually wouldn't find in, let's say, a regular Nogi competition. My initial thoughts about competing in CJJ and CJJ as a whole is that it would give Jiu-Jitsu players an uh, option to go the MMA route and kind of work their way towards mixed martial arts, but I like it now because it's kind of become its own sport in that uh, a lot of MMA fighters are crossing over into Jiu-Jitsu now, into combat Jiu-Jitsu that is and a lot of jiu-jitsu players are crossing over into CJJ. So you're seeing kind of a blend between the two sports and it's kind of become its own thing, which I like. And I feel like that really plays well into my game because I come from a grappling background. I wrestled all through high school, I did judo my whole life, I've done jiu-jitsu since I started my MMA career. So really the blend came naturally to me as it was. Last time I competed at CJJ Worlds was 2019, and it was the same weight class, same thing as uh, a lot of the same competitors as this time around. And I remember the day before the tournament, the draws came out, and I look at my phone and I'm like, oh cool, first match, I got Nick Honstein, he's the returning champion from the first ever CJJ event. It was really cool to be able to have a legend like him as my first ever CJJ match. Uh, I feel like because of that and because of how experienced he was with CJJ and how inexperienced I was, I didn't really get to show my full, well-rounded jiu-jitsu game, which is kind of a shame in my opinion. So I'm really blessed to be able to have this opportunity to go back and, you know, be able to prove that I belong with these guys and that I really should have this spot here and that I'm not just a judo guy doing combat jiu-jitsu. So my style of jiu-jitsu is very, very funky. It is like a little throwback to my wrestling days almost. Back when, because uh, wrestling is no-gi as well. I would always have a lot of scramble positions. I find myself in a lot of scramble positions. I would always uh, have a lot of, a lot of crazy exchanges, high point matches. So because of that, when I come to combat jiu-jitsu, I feel like because of those scrambles that I create without even meaning to, it opens up a lot of strikes for me. It opens a lot of, uh, niche submissions that you don't really see in a normal IBJJF tournament or other W tournaments. So the pandemic hasn't really affected my training at all, to be honest. Um, I'm blessed to have Ivan Salivary as a coach. He doesn't give a fuck about the restrictions in the pandemic. We were able to train healthily and safely, but still be able to maintain, you know, good cardio, good conditioning, and maintaining our technique even throughout the pandemic. I was blessed to have my brother, who's a world-class judoka, um, to train with at home whenever I wanted to, whenever he wanted to. He pulls me out of bed, says, all right, time to train. So we were ready from the beginning to be able to compete as soon as we're ready to go back. Push! Get the fuck out of Let's go, let's go, let's go! From all three grappling backgrounds I have, from wrestling to judo to jiu-jitsu, I bring a lot of different takedown submissions. A lot of those takedowns create a lot of different openings that jiu-jitsu players aren't really used to. All of my submissions come off of strong takedowns or come off of strange positions from the bottom that you wouldn't see in a traditional no-gi match. Um, out on the MMA, I have a dozen or so MMA fights so far behind me. So, I mean, the striking definitely comes second nature as well. Hey.
My name is Straj Badram, I'm a black belt, and I represent Fight Sports Miami. I'm super excited to uh, compete in the CJJ in Cancun, Mexico, uh, because it's a different style of tournament that I'm not used to, but it's very aggressive, it's very straightforward, so I'm excited to showcase my jiu-jitsu in that style. My previous experience competing with EBI was, I think it was 2016 uh, in Mexico City, and uh, I trained super hard for this tournament, but what happened was the altitude kind of messed with my lungs a little bit. Uh, I flew in the day before, made weight, everything was great. Um, you know, Eddie Bravo and, and everybody in that organization treated us super well. It was probably the most organized organization I've ever seen. Um, I felt like a superstar. I was super excited and, and I'm super excited to see uh, the next event coming up. Awesome frantic movement here, Matt side. These guys are getting very close to the edge, but uh, luckily it ends well. So my thoughts of CJJ is it's such an amazing rule set. I think it's so cool to have uh, strikes and palm strikes in the, in the grappling scene now. It def it's definitely gonna show people's true jujitsu and, and show their, also their grit, and how tough they really are. You have to kind of mentally change your game in a different aspect of how can I react off of getting hit so we've been training a lot of uh, getting hit and some reactions off of getting hit. Uh, so it just mentally definitely changes the game. So my style of Jiu Jitsu uh, benefits this type of rule set because I want to be aggressive. Uh, even sometimes when I'm you know, fighting some tournaments or training, sometimes I want to hit somebody too. So this is good that it's opened up now and uh, we can slap, we can palm strike, uh, we can you know, try to break people mentally and also physically with some hits. So I believe I have what it takes to become the uh, 135 Combat Jiu Jitsu Champion because I'm training hard. Um, I haven't stopped training since the last tournament in EBI and I want the belt and I want to bring the third title back to Fight Sports Miami. So the lockdown hasn't really affected Miami uh, dramatically as training goes. Uh, we are sticking with the guidelines here in uh, Fight Sports Miami, and we're training, um, you know, as much as we can um, with our guidelines. So some accomplishments that I have in uh, Jiu Jitsu and in life, I have my bachelor's degree in organizational management. Um, I also have won a couple titles in IBJJF Opens, uh, Black Belt. Uh, some titles I would like is um, Pan Am's second place um, at Nogi. And then I have third place at Brown Belt in Gi. Um, I got a couple wins at Fight to Win, and I previously fought in uh, the EBI as well. So I've been working um, recently on my no-gi game and trying to incorporate a lot more leg locks because I see that's kind of getting a little bit more popular in Jiu-Jitsu. So that's something that I want to bring to the table. You guys can expect uh, for me to bring a show. I'm coming in, um, you know, mind strong, body strong. I'm gonna be you know, striking, submitting, uh, winning in overtime if it, gets, if it gets there, and I'm just gonna be bringing my heart to the mat. My name is Michael Courier. I'm a black belt under Impact Jiu Jitsu. You know, I spent a lot of time doing other arts and other crafts that really helps my jiu-jitsu. Uh, I spent time working as a stuntman, uh, I was a professional rollerblader, uh, snowboarding, uh, I was a nationally ranked gymnast growing up, and a little bit of wrestling in there too. You know, I think one of the skills that I bring to jiu-jitsu is my background in gymnastics. Uh, nothing that I've done in my life has really impacted more than my gymnastics background. I got started in martial arts back when I was about three years old. Uh, my grandfather back in Ohio had a Kempo Karate school, and so I grew up doing Kempo Karate. That led me to wrestling uh, in Ohio. Everybody wrestles, so uh, wrestling was kind of in our DNA there. From there, I kind of progressed to Jiu Jitsu, and then Jiu Jitsu is really the thing that, that caught my attention the most, and that's been my love since then. So I have a very, very strict daily routine. Uh, every morning looks the exact same. I wake up, 
Uh, I do a morning workout. I usually skateboard for a little bit, bounce on the trampoline. Uh, I go straight to my Peloton bike. I do a 20 to 40 minute Peloton ride, straight to lifting weights, into the sauna, 45 minutes in the sauna every day, 10 minute ice bath. Uh, that's usually my, my, uh, my big chunk of my morning. Then it goes into early afternoon jiu-jitsu training, another break, and then jiu-jitsu again at night. Uh, I train jiu-jitsu full time. This is all I do for a living. I'm still new to the whole uh, competing scene, but I've done submission underground four times, three times winner. I've done fight to win. I was at the original Jiu Jitsu Overtime event. I did a World Series of Fighting, Grappling, Submission One, a Bullpen Series, Quintet Champion. I've done a little bit of everything in a short period of time. Ready, set, go! Man, being invited to CJJ Bracket in Cancun uh, is the highlight of my career. Uh, you know, I was, I was able to get in there and do the Jiu Jitsu Overtime on short notice. Uh, Eddie said he'd bring me in for this one with a full camp. Uh, I'm excited to get out there and do what I do. So the COVID lockdowns really haven't affected us at all here in Arizona. Um, we moved from my academy into my garage, but the training never stopped. Uh, we, we were able to reopen our gym in October and it's been gung-ho ever since then. So really no effect at all. I think that my style is unique, very physical. Uh, I'm a shorter, stronger guy, and I think that my power is gonna really bring me to the top. So you can expect to see nonstop action from me. Uh, it's, it, it's go, go, go for me. Uh, I love to mix in my gymnastics. You're probably gonna see a handstand or a cartwheel. Um, I just try to mix things up a little bit and just keep it entertaining. BMAC, we are in paradise. I can't think of a better place to see a fight. Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds, the Bantamweights qualifier for 2021. Uh, I just trained for one week. I was, uh, I was competing in Panams. Uh, I came back to Guadalajara, where I'm from. And then I saw the, uh, the paper for the flyer from the qualifiers and I signed it up and I started cutting weight. I, I've been two days without eating, sort of just sipping water. <laughs> but I'm good. Uh, I really, when I won, I feel really like peace. And I'm happy, really happy. Man. They were all submissions. Uh, I feel 100% I can even go roll again. So I'm fine. Honestly, I'm fine. Uh, I like to end my, uh, my fight like really fast. So that's what I came to do. That's the job and that's it. Trying to make something happen here is Priego. Quick submissions and like fun matches. Guard pull from Priego. He goes to the sweep. Uh, the first match, I think it, it was a triangle. Uh, I, I was like kind of nervous, but I, I want to like go for the takedown. But then my head was like, no, man, go and pull guard and do your thing. And the first match was the triangle. The guy fell, uh, fell to sleep. I was, honestly, I was worried about it. I don't like to hit people, honestly. If you see my matches, I don't hit a lot. I just control and go for this mission. He's almost to the shin. This could be trouble. Oh, there it is. There's the tap. Wow, he's Slapped out. Him. Slapped him. My goodness. Putting Fernandez to sleep. The next one was, uh, uh, was a Kimura with a triangle, right? Uh, I, uh, the guy was hard, honestly, was hard. I decided to, uh, uh, I saw him like he wanted to pull my foot. So I, I go for the sweep, pass the guard, uh, pull the side control, and start hunting the, the submission. And at the end, I finish with my legs. Into regulation, put your hands together for Manuel Prego. And we are underway. Juan Edgar Chico yep. taking on Manuel Prego. This is our finale of our Combat Jiu Jitsu World Bantamweight Qualifier. And the last one, uh, that, that guy was hard, man. When he hit me in this part of the face, I was like stumbling. But I saw him like opening the arm and it's, he was not gonna give me the triangle. So I was like, let's go for the Kimura, man. So it works. Double wrist control. That's the opportunity we wanna see. Oh, a Kimura tip from the bottom. This could be good. He used that Kimura in his last match to finish. There's a couple uh, things I can go. The way of Priego here, he can either get this submission or maybe utilize this position as an uh, uh, opportunity to sweep. But right now, this is all on tap. There it is. Wow! Manuel Priego, victorious via Kimura. He is now the winner of the Bantamweight Qualifier. My goodness. Nicely done. Let's make this one official. Uh, I think I'm going to change a little bit, like train with MMA fighters. The last one, the last guy was, was hard. He hits me hard in the face. I was like stumbling. My training is going to change a little bit, but 
um, I still um, uh, I was still doing the same thing. So pulling guard and trying to submit like a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter. A beautiful performance by Manuel Prego, matched only by the beautiful scenery of Cancun. I'm Isaac Cordova from 10th Line in Orange County, and I'm a brown belt as of this year. Yeah, so a lot of my buddies, uh, Keith Gregorian, Derek Wayfield, Michael John, have done the coal fires in the past, so it was just about my time training with them and uh, to reach the level to, to be here. We actually prepped for this uh, specific tournament pretty well for the past two weeks with my coach Andy Balmore. We had a pretty strategic game plan of just bringing out my A game, leaving my B minus, B plus game at home. So uh, stuck to that and then uh, paid off dividends, worked wonders. I was able to dictate the pace of each match. Of course, my opponents are tough, so they got off their attacks, but I was able to counterattack and neutralize everything. Super stoked. Uh, combat Jiu Jitsu is right up my alley. Uh, epitome of Jiu Jitsu. Stay on top, pinch my knees, and maybe throw in a few slaps before we get submission. Uh, a lot of my friends are in there who I've trained with Austin Daffron, uh, Ben Eddy from 10P, who I super look up to, Red Jitsu, who, uh, Red Olicrone, who trains with us at 10 Planet Orange on occasion. So a lot of my friends are in there. So it'll be interesting that dynamic of do we actually hit each other? How, how much do we stay friends once the slaps come on? How, of course, we're going to push the tempo of the match, but we all know we respect each other uh, in our Jiu Jitsu. And if one person throws a slap, we know the other person's going to throw a slap and uh, we're going to retaliate. Of course, out of love, but uh, for the love of the game as well. So super stoked to compete against some of my best friends. Gentlemen, are you ready? Are you ready? All right, let's hit it. Pretty much all I'm doing nowadays is training about three times a day and sleeping the other 10 hours of the day. So it's not a bad life. actually bought a, a Master Eddie's Mastering the Rubber Guard in 2009. So I've always been uh, a 10th Planet fan since then, had 10th Planet's bat since 2009, even though I never trained with 10th Planet, submissions 101. I was always mastering uh, the Rubber Guard from the very beginning, always pulling it out in tournaments since 2009. So. Oh! Took like six, seven uh, years off of Jitsu. 2017, got out of the military, started up again at 10th Planet Orange County. Uh, got all my belts, blue to brown with them. Super stoked with where I'm at. I'm teaching mornings at Fullerton. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of my journey here. Each quarter turn reveals something else in Jiu-Jitsu, reveals a new lesson, something I didn't know. There's, uh, I can't wait tonight. All I'm gonna do right now is uh, go home uh, and if uh, my buddies have any video of the tape, watch the tape, put it on repeg, go get something to eat and get on the mats tonight and see where I messed up, what I did wrong and fix it. And that's what I'm going to do whether I win or lose. I'm going to record my matches, I'm going to study them, I'm going to find out within that quarter turn what was I missing, what did I not know. So regardless whether I win or lose, the process is the same and that's why I do it. So it's, uh, it's easy to wake up when I'm just eager to learn. Uh, right now it seems like it's the top and monumental point in my career, but I know of course, win or lose, there's stuff after it that will be taller and there'll be uh, more grand that, are, that is to come along with the journey, but right now it's the highest point I can see, so that's where I'm going. My name is David Weintraub, I'm a brown belt representing Vitor Shaolin Jiu Jitsu. I have achieved the level of freedom in my life that allows me to pursue the goals that I want and to live out things that I've dreamed of for years, like fighting at Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds and trying to take this world title. And uh, that is an accomplishment that I, I consider very significant.
I have fought before Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. I'm finisher sub only, 155 overtime champion. I've won some things, but I'm looking to do a lot more. Uh, I don't think I've shown yet what I'm fully capable of. I'm honored to be brought back to fight again at Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. This is where I want to be fighting. I want to pursue this sport and uh, fight as much as I can in Combat Jiu Jitsu. I want to be the world champion. There's nothing I would rather be fighting for than a Combat Jiu Jitsu World title. There's no sport I would rather be competing in. I can't say enough about how much this means to me. Uh, I hope to win this tournament and come back again and again and fight again and again. Striking changes the grappling game in a lot of ways. It gives people more opportunities to make mistakes because if you strike in the wrong moments, it can be detrimental. It changes the offensive potential from a lot of positions. So that you have the ability to use striking very effectively offensively, and that will change how people have to approach how they for example, attack and defend from guard or a lot of other bottom positions. Bottom positions become more defensive and less offensive most of the time for most people. Some people have games that uh, are very well adjusted to the striking from a variety of different positions. Um, it allows you to add complexity to your game when you have more elements that you can introduce to a situation. You can create more complex situations and more complex puzzles for your opponent to have to solve and that can sometimes provide you with offensive opportunities which otherwise would not have been there. The last time I fought at Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds I jumped in on two weeks notice, two and a half weeks notice I think, uh, moving up in weight. Uh, to a weight class that I'm very comfortable in, 155, I've fought there and won there before in other places. Uh, but coming from primarily competing in sub only uh, for a couple of years, prior to that, having two weeks to readjust myself to the striking and to a new rule set was suboptimal. Our Travis still in the game. He may be able to, to last this, but PJ is working that grip. He's got to get his left hand the rest of the way behind. That's not any sort of an excuse uh, for my performance. I lost to PJ Barch at the 155 tournament. PJ is a beast. He got me. It's not. Uh, it's not about that. But I am much better prepared this time. I am just as hungry. I'm ready to go, and I'm better prepared, and I'm more experienced, and uh, I have more tools at my disposal this time. My style of jiu-jitsu benefits from the implementation of striking because I try to be positionally dominant. I try to make sure that I'm winning battles with my opponent over all the small things, over grips, over tie-ups, over top position, over hand positioning, and leg positioning, and head positioning. By winning all those small battles, I put myself in positions where striking becomes effective offense for me and also strikes from my opponent provide offensive opportunities by leaving defensive holes. Because of my attention to detail in grappling, I think that I create opportunities to strike where my opponents will put themselves in trouble by striking me. I hope to fight as much as possible for Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds in the future because it is my favorite place that I've fought up to this point across all of the different combat sports that I've competed in. My name is Randy Villarreal. I'm representing Genesis Jiu Jitsu and I'm a first degree black belt. Once I'm here, 
<laughs> uh, honestly, all my skills revolve around jiu-jitsu. I pretty much do this full time. Um, from teaching kids to adults, competing myself, it's my whole life jiu-jitsu, kind of a nerd. So I'm fortunate enough to be able to train full time. I actually, I run my Jiu Jitsu school, so that's my full time job uh, teaching. Typical day though, is, um, just wake up, get my kids ready to school. Once I get that done, then it's morning session consists of strength conditioning, cardio, a little bit of Jiu Jitsu, studying. Then um, nighttime, that's where I do my teaching, teach kids, teaching good dogs, and that's also where I get my training in. So I feel really fortunate to get the invite back. I competed for the first time um, two years ago. I didn't get the outcome I wanted, but it, 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 was, it was a real good learning experience. It, I feel it's helping me prepare for this time around. So I was going to college at the time, I was 19. Uh, my brother, he would come over, bring UFC DVDs, I'd start watching them, and pretty much took off from there. I heard there was a, a local gym down the street from where I was living at the time. Um, I just went and trained, and that's pretty much the end of it. I just never stopped training. I have 20 plus pro MMA fights, um, combat jiu-jitsu veteran, just pretty much going between jiu-jitsu and MMA. So my initial thoughts, I was I was obviously excited. I started thinking of it as a new challenge and how to prepare for it. And now that I've done it, I definitely I know what it takes. I'm more experienced, um, just preparing for it, being out there. It's just I'm ready to redeem myself. This role set, I truly feel it favors me. Like I said, I'm from the MMA world. Um, all my wins were by submission or ground and pound. So this is right up my alley. I get to go out there, not just do jujitsu, but open it up by using slaps. And I just really feel it's gonna benefit me. Thank God these lockdowns didn't affect me too much. I think it was like the first two weeks of a month. It was, you know, kind of unknown, like not sure what, what was going on with the whole Corona pandemic. So kind of played it safe, but it just, it was one of those things where, it, it, for me, it wasn't worth it to have to be in lockdown and not train. So I only took like two weeks off and I just, underground training in my garage, invited my, my teammates over. And luckily six weeks later, we're, we're open back up. So it didn't really affect me too much. Honestly, I believe I have what it takes, just not only my physical skill sets, but the mental side of this, the intangibles. That's where I feel I'm, I'm gonna strive with this. Like I said, this is my second time doing it, so I, I'm definitely more prepared. I'm definitely doing things better this time around to make sure I get my hand raised. You can expect to see nonstop action. I, I like pushing the pace. I like striking to advance my positions, and also I like to use my strikes open up of my submission so you can be in for a treat watch my matches tune in it's just it's, it's gonna be a good time 16 world-class competitors going at it just it's only been one winner and do my best to make sure that's me you know i think at this point people are gonna have felt they're gonna have been training long enough with the slaps and with the combat jiu-jitsu to feel pretty comfortable and and to be coming in like like this is something that's normal for them. I think just coming back made sense for me because I've always liked the rule set to fight. And I think this time around, I'll, I'll be able to have a few more surprises. You know, people are really pressing their palm into your head, and basically just punching it right into your dome. Uh, it's not, it's not fun. The thing that separates me from most of the guys in this competition, I suppose is my uh, experience and just my overall grit. I was the world's first combat jiu-jitsu champion. I'm here to take back my belt. You know, March 21st, none of that matters. Doesn't matter who was champion, who wasn't champion, what anybody's done before. It's just who can show up that day, perform well, and get the job done. And I believe that's gonna be me.
Regardless whether I win or lose, the process is the same, and that's why I do it. So it's, uh, it's easy to wake up when I'm just eager to learn. I've been training Jiu-Jitsu for over 20 years. I've been winning for over 10 years. This is another one. I'm gonna bring another belt to my case, and I'm ready to go. I'm one of the highest levels in the bracket. I'm definitely pretty jazzed to be in Mexico, you know what I mean? Cancun's always been on, like I said, my bucket list, so being in that atmosphere, temperature, you know, everything is just, you know, it's a dream for sure.